Hi and welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for another episode of Crafting with DDs. We are going to be working again on A Trip to the Stars by So Alicious Baker. So let's get started. from thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while I do a little bit of crafting so what you need to do right now is decide what craft you're going to do you can do cross stitch you can do some EPP like I'm going to or you can just work on anything that you've got in your crafty room or in your lounge room wherever you might be joining us uh, grab a cuppa or a beverage of your choice sit back relax I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing but we are mostly going to be working on this I have already got three of uh, sets of my um, hexagon stone I've got one more set to do and that is for the top corners that I'm working on at the moment so I've done the bottom two and one of them and I've got one more to do so then that will be the corners done and then we'll be on to the stars so I figured that every Thursday I'm just going to do some EPP and you can join me uh, for that so if you want to get this pattern there is a link down below where you can actually get this from the website it is here in Australia and I the top of my head I think it is actually a downloadable PDF but don't quote me on that I could be totally wrong um so I will put that in the links down below you can go and check it out for yourself they've got some great patterns over there I'm sure that you'll find something that you want to work on all right so it turns out that Thursday seems to be my crafting with DD seems to be all about English paper piecing at the moment and that's only because that's what I'm working on I've got several other ones that I want to work on as well so it may just end up being that this is the segment that we're going to do all right so I've got my fabrics out there go my scraps I don't need those um, I've still got some uh, hexagons as you can see um, on the camera there in the corner I've got those I've got my so tight tiles now a couple of people asked me where to get these from I did put a link all the things that I use um, within like if I can find the links everything that I use I will link, link down below some of them will be affiliate links some of them will be just links to random shops where I've bought stuff or um, I'm, I'm not affiliated with at all but most of the places that I will link up down below are either Amazon or the Fat Quarter Shop because that is the where I buy majority of my stuff um, because they have the things that I want a lot of time um, like these so tight tiles I did get from the quilt show um, but I don't need to buy anymore so and they are linked down below to the Fat Quarter Shop. It'll take you to their website. Just go and search for it. And um, I, and there is affiliate, affiliate link. So all that means is you don't pay any more. I just get a small commission for the um, linking their website. So they are what I use. And you would have seen them last week. So I've got them out. I've got my needles out. I do have my needle threader here somewhere. Well, I thought I did. Must be still in my little pocket. I need my scissors. And... No, that's my thimble. All right, we've only got one pocket left. Oh, there it is. I knew I'd pulled it out. Um, we're going to be also working with some diamonds today. I don't know how much stitching I'm going to get done. I sort of, I'm in two minds. Like, I know that I've said that I like to work in a production line, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hanging to actually get into the diamonds. All right, so I'll show you the size of the diamonds. They are tiny. So this is a template that comes with it. Um, and it is a one inch diamond okay so I actually bought when I went to the um, to the uh, quilt show um, I got the hexagon template and I got the diamond template so if I wanted to cut my own papers I could and I've got it there to cut the fabric so um, I've got the I had a couple of bits of scrap left over from cutting the white hexagons which are all prepped for the quilt so if you have a look you can see in the quilt there is a lot of white hexagons in there they're all prepped so I could if I wanted to I could essentially start sewing them together but I'm going to wait until I've done some stars so I really need to get my finger out and start prepping um, prepping for the, these so I've that's why I put my fabrics out and I'm going to give something like I've done it once or twice before, but I don't know how well it's going to work. So we will have to um, sort of have a look at that and see if it will work for me because I've 
trying to speed up the process. So these are the fabrics um, that I have used in the hexagon. So let me just move that out of the way. And the good thing about the so tight things, they have a magnet. And so, yeah, you don't lose your needle. <laughs> so as you can see, I have all these um, hexagons already done. And these are the fabrics that I use. So what I'm going to try and do is get as many of the stars out of these fabrics as possible. Um, I'm only going to work with the coloured fabric today. I'm not going to worry about working with um, any white fabric today because I haven't got that out. I'll have to get that out. I put it, I've got like five metres of white fabric that I just use for, for quilts and whatnot. So, and I leave that over in that section. But I've got all these, and these are all beautifully coloured. And the other ones that I've got, which are um, up in the bag under the long arm machine, are some of the dots and whatnot. But I first of all want to use all of these fabrics as much as this. And then I've got the dots and stripes, and then I will pull them in. Um, and I've got a couple other quilts that I'm going to use Tula Pink in as well. And like, I'm not a huge fan of Tula Pink, but her last couple that have come out I really liked and the series that had the um the squirrel in it the raccoon and the one with the owl so I've got some um oh, I'm just knocking me fabric off everywhere I've got some fabric here that has the owl in it and you've probably seen that up here like I use this very sparingly I got about six meters of it and I've used it for gifts um I've made a couple of retreat bags with it um and yeah so I use it very sparingly and that's the last of it so that's why it's sort of said this is like my um I don't know I'll just turn the camera so you can see this is like my private stash <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's not for sale you can't have that I'm sorry but anyway we are here to do some stitching um I've got my needle here there was another thing that I wanted to talk about today too and I've put it away already I'm oh, no, here they are so remember when I first started doing this which was a couple of weeks ago I talked about having the donut with all the colors in it um and it's by superior threads now the it's bottom line that I use so you can see here this is the spool this is always in like for bindings um, on my English paper piecing that I've done or anything like that. I've always got this here. Um, I use this on uh, for quilting as well and it's a polyester thread. It's a 60 weight and I find that this one's the easiest one to use. I use this for my applique. I use it for everything basically um, and that's why it's down a bit. These are $17.50 a spool and they come with, how many metres do they have on this? Um... It's 60, yeah, it's 60 weight polyester and the colour on this one is uh, 620, which is their cream. And there's 1,420 yards on it. And it, Superior Threads is a Japanese um, brand, like it's ma made in Japan. But they also have these pre-wound pre bobbins. Now, if you are an English paper piece, you've already seen these. But if you're not, these don't, they're called the Superior... Um, well, they call it a, a Super Bob's Donut. Okay, so they are pretty much all the colours that are in. There's a few other ones that aren't in here, but they're the majority of the colours that are in the bottom line range. Now, for me, this is, I, I use, I've got one in my uh, sewing basket that I use for EPP, which is down in storage um, at the moment. And this one I have uh, near my long arm machine, so I can match the color now i think the gray is missing out this missing one you can see here it's either the cream or the gray that is missing out of here um because i've used it all i think it's the dark gray because the creams are there so anyway um yeah so basically the these have oh, i can't remember what the how much is on these but these little bobbins have a lot on them and you can see there that it's wound on right to the edge. So this is perfect for a project like this because I don't have to have all of those spools of thread. I've got all these colours so I can just use what I need. And you know when you do English paper piecing, you don't use a lot of thread as such because you're working with small pieces. You might make a lot of those pieces, but overall these, these are a 60 weight and they go a long way. So I actually have, um, have these in with my EPP stuff and as I said this one's from my long arm machine and then that way 
when a quilt comes in, I can say, like, I can match up the backing because not all backings come from my store. Like, I've got the colors here that I have in my store. But those ladies that, or gentlemen that bring their backing with them, I've got this to match up. And then I can go, right, well, I need this thread. And I have the majority of these colors. I think it's the yellow and that bright green is about the only one that I don't have here um, because I don't really have a, um, a call for it. And then I've got these little spools and um, on my more popular colours, which are my navy blue, the royal blue, the cream, the white, and the pale pink, and that middle pink. So you can see there I've got three pinks, that middle pink there. They are my most pop, oh, and light blue is the other one, are my most popular along with black and grey for quilts. So I have the big spools of those, but for all the other colours, I just have the small spools, and then that way I can... Um, I've got a little reference so I don't have to pull out all my spools because they're all in a container and I don't have to bring out all my spools so I can just pull this out and then I can um, match them and that's why some of them are, are unwound and whatnot so keep it I'll put a link down below um, where you can get this because it's it's an invaluable tool especially if you're a long armor as well and, and for English paper piecing it's perfect because you've got enough on there um, and it, you know if you use a lot of colors like with me I use a lot of cream um, for my applique and stuff like that so I've got a big spool of that I don't worry about using the bobbin I might take the bobbin with me or I'll wind more on it I've got a bobbin winder there where I can wind more colors on as I use them so I've only had to but I've bought two I've got one for my long arm reference and then I've got one that I use for my EPP so keep an eye out down below for the link for that I will leave a link for both Australia and um and because uh, I get them here for for anybody in Australia and I can do free postage on that from anybody that wants to um, buy one just let me know either in the comments or send me an email all my contact details are down below and you can order it that way because these are a special order I don't stock them um, I don't have them on I don't, let me rephrase that I don't have them on stock they are a special order so I have to order them in as you want them but I'm, I'm happy to do free postage on those all right so we've talked enough about that and let's get into some sewing and I just need to find the one because I'm doing my sections the same so this is my top one and so they are the ones that are, that's the one I'm going to use as my guide today and sew that together. So I'll sit that there and then we'll get a few of these together, I think, and then we'll, um, we'll uh, do some prepping and I'll just show you what I'm thinking I'm going to do and use my, I'm just going to be a little bit rough and ready and uh, use my um, glue pen to stick down my um, bits and pieces, like my little diamonds. And then I'm just going to cut the fabric rather than trace out the, trace it out I'm just I'm trying to save some time I'm trying to speed up the process all right so let me just thread this and then I'm going to have to change glasses I'm probably going to have to change glasses before I thread this up let's get that out of the way Anna, I'm just like we're all we're all sort of at the point now where we're um, starting to work on these diamonds and I've just um, because I can get the papers I ordered the papers for the girls that are doing it and um yeah, so I'm. <laughs> we're all at that point where we're going to start doing the diamonds and we're all a little bit skittish about it. Um, Gail has decided that she's just going to do hers as um, hexagons, uh, but she's going to make a second quilt and use the stars. Um, just until she get. I think she's sort of decided to do that so she gets the feel of English paper piecing because she's new to that. So, um, And I can understand that. that that's fair enough. All right, so just stick that there, grab my sew tight, leave one there for um, the needle. And where does this go? So that one goes there and that one goes there. Doesn't matter how I put that, it's going to be crooked. That one can be a bit... No, 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 that way. Is that how it goes? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit directionally challenged today. So, I, as you know, I have been uh, busily um, sorting stuff out and trying to find things and um, looking for all the projects that I've got that um, need to be started, completed. I've, you know, I've already started and I've got things to go. So <laughs> we're almost back to um, a Finish of Friday episode because I've got a fair bit of um, stuff in there to... Um, finish 
but I, I don't know if I'll bring that back, finish it Friday, because <laughs> that was a live stream. Um, so that's that was a bit different. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I might, I, you never know. Never say never, right? So, um, excuse me, I just need a drink. That's what I need. Um, yeah, so I've got a fair thing, a fair few things that I'm going to do. I want to get a lot of this done. I want to get a lot of the prep done. Um, and then this might just make an appearance every now and again. Um, but I've got, I've got a heap of quilts there that need to be done. And they are from the Fat Quarter Shop. But they are the, um, what do you call them? The designer mystery ones. And um, then their block of the months as well. So there's a, a couple of those on there and I'm just going to say backwards so you can see what I'm doing and all I'm doing is just a whip stitch and we um, we talked about this and not everybody has joined us for everyone so I'll just do a quick um, stitch. You just want to take a little bit of a bite off the top and you don't want to go through the card. So yeah, all right. So I've been playing around with cameras. I think I like this camera a little bit better. It's not, um, it's, it's a little bit clearer than the webcam. Um, so I've just got to keep playing around until I get what I'm looking for. Um, I don't have big cameras because I really don't have the money to buy a decent one. And if I'm going to buy a camera, I, I, you know, every now and again, like I start saving for it and then something will come up. I'll have to replace something or the machine needs servicing or something like that. And um, I try not to take out of the household budget for anything that's to do with out here it's all purely through you know working and um just you know quilting and all that sort of stuff I, I like it to pay for itself but um yeah every now and again I like I start saving for the camera and then all of a sudden um you know so I'll need the long arm machine I'll need to be the, the, the last big one was that I was saving for the camera I ended up having to use the money that I had I was so close to for a new computer so and you know to do videos I need a decent computer so that's sort of where it was and then I'm like you know what I'm just going to use my phone and well, I'll just make do and I've got the webcam there that works that worked pretty much that was okay for last week's um uh, slow stitching Saturday um, and how did you enjoy that did you like seeing those that video and me working on the borrow um, I had a couple of comments from people saying they'd never heard of borrow before so that was that was nice I had a message from another lady um, as well saying that she thought it was a, a good episode and that she's very keen to do it uh, unfortunately I said in that I was going to try and um, you know, do one with just quilting cotton. I just haven't had time. I've had a lot going on this week. We've had Neroli's birthday. We've gone, we had a public holiday as well. I've had uh, a fair few customers come in to drop quilts off and stuff like that. So I just haven't had the opportunity and, you know, with filming and um, tutorials and the magazine as well has been this week. Um, I've, I've got just a little bit to go and then that'll be heading off to the proofreader. Um, so she'll be expecting that and um, yeah, we can get that release that comes out on um, Monday. So yeah, it's not too far away. She has it for a few days and then it comes back. So she'll have it for one, um, for two or three days and then um, it'll come back and she'll send me the list of everything that uh, needs to be done. We've improved. Um, I've learned some more about the different uh, things that the graphic design stuff that I've got so I've learned some more about that I'm pretty chuffed with that so it looks it started like every issue I'm learning more and more and every issue is getting better and better so I am so excited to to bring you this um this latest edition it's going to be absolutely brilliant there's a little bit of embroidery in it there's um I don't want to lose the kitty cat <laughs> So look, see, so if I put it up uh, that way, the way it's supposed to go, when I trim it up, I'm going to lose the kitty cat. So I'm just going to turn it. He's going to be a little bit skew if, and we're going to lose a little bit of him, but we'll have this one down the bottom. It's like it's saying, peekaboo, just see an eye looking at you. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we're going to. So yeah, I'm super, super excited to, to have that come out in the... Um, 
next week. So that will be Monday that comes out on the 15th. It is Monday the 15th or is it Tuesday the 15th? No, Monday the 15th. So that'll be out. Because I lose, I lose, I lose track of time. I really do. Like when I'm busy working, I just get so caught up. And then before I know it, the week has passed. I'm like, oh gosh, I haven't messaged anybody. Everybody will wonder where I am. All right, so I've just um, sewn that on and um, I could come down here and sew this one in, but I'm just going to sew the line in and then I can do one big line um, as, I, as I go because um, I find that quicker. But because my thread's down here and I need to get here, so what I do is I just weave it through until I come up there. So I'll just go through the fabric without going and just do like jump stitches essentially. You're not going to see it because it's going to be all caught up in the same... So yeah, that's sort of what I do. I don't know. I just do what's, what works for me. I'm sure that there's plenty of people out there going, I don't know why you're doing that. You should just end your thread. But I just don't want to. I don't like to end my thread. Does it give it more strength? I don't know. Um, it's, it is what it is. And it's just a way for me getting from point A to point B. But yeah. I'm so... I'm like... I am super excited to bring this issue of the down the rabbit hole magazine to you. It is um, we've got some different style, a uh, different style of embroidery in at this time. We've got some beautiful charts, and it's just it is. It's just so it's like I'm all self taught, and it's all coming together really nicely. And I'm just I'm 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 starting to get it to where I want it to be and beyond. You know, and, and it's great because um, I was talking to Leanne the other night about it and just showing the different things that are, are coming into this issue. And, um, you know, and I said, from where we started to, to where we are now, uh, that it's come a, lot, a long way and it's still got a lot further to go and beyond. And that, but as she said, she goes, it's going to be great because you've got, you've got that progression, like you can see the growth of the map excuse me the magazine and I agree like it, it's good that you, you've got that visual representation and like and I just like to say thank you to a lot of my viewers that have purchased the magazine I do appreciate your support and taking a chance on me um while I um I'm putting this magazine out I'm, I'm hoping to grow more and more um with each issue as I was saying we, you know little things are making it a more pleasing read and and stuff like that um yeah and hopefully you're enjoying all the little charts and the meeting the different designers and um yeah it's 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 been a lot of fun putting it all together and um i can't believe that this summer will be two years that we've been doing it like it just it's, that two years has just flown by like i cannot believe how quick it's gone yeah, and this has been that that uh, this magazine has been something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Like it had been in the back of my mind for quite some time to have a digital magazine. I mean, the customer base is growing every month as well, which is fantastic. You know, and I've still got a lot, a long way to go um, before it's it's exactly what I want. Um, we do have a couple of little advertisements in it where we are looking at expanding a little bit more and that will help me to be able to pay designers more and um, all that sort of stuff, you know, all the day-to-day -day grind of, of that. So, um, you know, because ultimately it's about the designers and, and, you know, them getting paid for what they're submitting and um i'm working with some lovely designers at the at, at the present time and their work is just impeccable it's just gorgeous and um it's it's always really exciting too to you know to see what they're they've thought of for the next issue and so we've got in the next couple of months we've got the spring one which is coming out on monday then um i think it's about six or eight weeks after that at the 15th of october uh, so about eight weeks we have the um <clears throat> excuse me we have the um the christmas edition coming out so that that's got all you know little smalls ornaments little they're all small weekend sort of projects and and whatnot so you'll have to keep an eye out for that and that 
that is the the special editions are a little bit different um, from your regular issue. So your regular issue has things in it like uh, needlework, a closer look. We've got you know um, the stitchy community. We've got um, the designers. We've got the featured designer, which doesn't happen every month, but um, uh, every issue. But we've got the featured designer. Um, we have usually a featured floss tuber. Um, this time we actually have someone from New Zealand, so you'll have to get the magazine to find out who it is. And yes, yeah, she's very funny. I like her a lot. I watch her and I'm like, Gail actually put me onto her. So um, Gail's great. Like if she comes across anybody new, especially if they're Australian or New Zealand, she'll let me know. And um, yeah, and then I can go and have a look and see what they're doing. And then I send them off an email and go, hey... And just help them get some exposure because there's a lot of people that uh, buy the magazine that actually had never watched Floss Tube before and are now watching people that they uh, learnt about in the magazine, which is exciting. Um, there's also been a lot of people that have never purchased a digital ma magazine before and are super appreciative that I've put this together and they're thoroughly enjoying it because they like the little... Um, some like their favorite designers in the magazine or they've um, you know they've found someone new to to stitch their works and and whatnot so it's exciting like it, it's really really exciting to be part of something that um, people are actually enjoying and I'm like and I'm super excited because I'm learning so much about different things as well which is always great like, I, I love to learn stuff. Like, who doesn't love to learn stuff and, and get more knowledge? So, um, I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there that don't like it. But anyway, <laughs> I like it and that's all that matters. And, um, yeah, so I'm learning so much. Like, uh, there's just so much to learn about it. Like, the marketing side of it, the, you know, I could probably do a little bit better there. I could probably do with a... a, a a social media marketer as well but I really want to to learn how to do it and um because you know the attention to detail and and stuff like that it's and it's exciting to learn new stuff and as you know I'm not averse to learning new stuff I'll throw myself in um at the moment with that sort of stuff I'm learning um I'm just doing like through YouTube I'm not doing a course away from the house because I don't have time with that so I'm just I'm following a couple of um Oh, what's the name? I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But I'm looking at like um, keywords and um, what do you call it? Search engine optimization, so SEOs. And I'm trying to learn a lot of that sort of stuff. It does my head in, absolutely does my head in. But I think it's taken me a little while, but I'm starting to get wrap my head around it. And I often joke with my kids, I, I said, I've, I've jammed so much information into my head, my head's rejecting this information. <laughs> and I mean, truth be told, I would rather one of them just learn it and them do it, be, you know, because they're always on their devices and stuff like that. Um, Savannah has been helping a friend do some social media marketing and, and whatnot. And um, she said that once she gets the hang of it, she'll she'll probably take over from that. Um, and depending on what's happening at uni, um, she might continue on with that when she goes to uni. So, and she said that she'll show me what she does and, and all that sort of, yeah, look, I understand it, but let's face it. I'm hopeless at Instagram. I'm just barely doing, um, stuff on Facebook. Um, so I need to get better at that. And I think, like the one thing that I have learned in the last month, and you would have noticed on Instagram, more and more stuff was going up this month. So um, in the past month for the magazine. So if you haven't followed us at Down the Rabbit Hole um, magazine on Instagram, just, yeah, you'll find it. It's, it's got the little green emblem um, with the little bunny in it. And, um, yeah, so, and if you can't find it, I th the links are all down below anyway. And we've also got a YouTube channel that um, we've sort of, when I did it, I was going to do Stitch With Me's on there from the magazine and stuff like that. I really haven't had the time because I've had to learn a lot of stuff. Um, there are a couple of things on there and there will be more. There's like tutorials on there for in issue one or two. I did something. Uh, I did a table runner and whatnot. So there are um, tutorials on there. And so basically what we're doing with that, it's um, basically 
I'll end up doing some Stitch With Me's, but it was more about just securing the name. So if we wanted to go to doing tutorials for different things. Um, so like what I, the plans that I have at the moment for that, um, which are, and when I say plans, I use that term very loosely. <laughs> okay, very loosely. So it all have to do with needlework. So you know, if we've got, for instance, in the the issue that's coming out, we have a different style of embroidery and it's quite popular at the moment for people to watch that. Now, I'm not doing it because of the popularity of it, but a lot of people have seen it and may not have known how to do it or anything like that. So to make it easier for those that don't get onto YouTube and watch YouTube all the time, I'm just going to do like an overhead like I do with my Stitch With Me and um, you can see me just stitch the, the pattern out. Now I can't show you because the magazine's not out yet but after Monday, guess what? You'll be able to see everything that's going to be in the magazine and it's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, some of the patterns are so cute. There's there's a, like I so want to show you it all now because I've seen all the pictures. I've got all the charts. Um, so we've got Deb from... Um, Frog Cottage Designs going to be in there. We've got Caitlin. She's got a little one in there as well. Um, and Caitlin does a lot of small stuff. So she's got a Facebook group as well. And she's uh, Noughts and Cross Stitches. And uh, she's also got an Etsy store as well. Uh, there's stuff from me. There is stuff from Zena. Zena is in Cyprus. She is our regular international designer. And we've also got Susie. Susie has been... Uh, was... Uh, Stitch with Susie, sorry. I was going to say Susie with Stitch. <laughs> it was around the other way, Stitch with Susie. She has, um, she approached us, sent in um, for submission because, as you know, we have a little section for internationals. Now, most of the designers will either be from Australia or New Zealand or both. Um, so we haven't had any designers from New Zealand. So if you are from across the pond and you are a cross-stitch designer, hey, send me a message. Comment down below. Um, send me a message on Instagram, either through Devana Lee Designs or down the Rabbit Hole magazine. Send me a message. Show me what, you, what you've what you got. Point me in the right direction and we can discuss. So if you... Because we'd really, really, really want to get some more um, uh, New Zealand... Well, we want New Zealand designers to come and uh, play with us in Down the Rabbit Hole. And so, um, yeah, so we've got, this time we've got two internationals. We generally either have one or two. Um, and, I mean, I can't say that in the future we won't have more, like a bigger um, section. But at the moment we have one or two. Um, and that's through, uh, just through budgeting and stuff like that. Because we want to be around for a long time, not a short time. And so, yeah, we've got the lovely Susie from Stitch with Susie. And uh, she's also got a floss tube as well. Um, so go check her out. And uh, you'll find her on Instagram as well. She's got some gorgeous patterns. And she is exclus exclusively um, designing some stuff for Down the Rabbit Hole. And she will be um, appearing in... Uh, she appeared in the winter issue, which is the purple cover, and then she'll be appearing in the spring, the summer, and also the um, autumn of next year. So we actually have a 12-month calendar that she's doing, like a, the monthly calendars, and they are uh, adorable. Like, and she was cover girl last issue, so on the winter one, so go and check that out. Um, if you're not sure which one it was, it's the purple cover. You can't miss it. And... Um, yeah, so she was quite surprised because I didn't tell her that she was going to be on the cover. Um, so she was quite surprised to be the cover girl. <laughs> and, um, but she was also the featured designer as well because she um, was new to the magazine. So that's why we did that. And as I said, we don't always have... We won't always have a featured designer because, you know, they've already been or, or whatnot. But as we grow more and more, obviously we'll have more... Um, things you know we'll introduce different sections and stuff like that we've got a couple of um, new sort of entries that will come into it um, playing with color that's occasionally comes into it so it just depends on the magazine it's not in every single issue but it will be there something will be there that'll take your fans we, we also have a regular contributor named Jan uh, Jan does the article so she's done um, I think the last one, that, the last issue, she did Dorset Buttons, was it? I can't remember. 
I do have, where's my paperwork? Oh, it must be all over there because I'm working on the magazine. But I, um, yeah, so she has done, she does articles. I do an article, so I do needlework, a closer look. And I will just pick a genre of needlework. So last issue, I talked about Sashiko because I knew that I was going to the, um, I had been to, to the show and uh, yeah, so I thought, well, it's fresh in my mind and the things that I learnt and stuff like that. And I basically, yeah, I put that together and so you can go and see that. Um, what else have we done? I've done a, a couple of different, like Hardanger and Gail Supply. If anybody has not seen Gail's Hardanger pieces, you need to go and see her Hardanger pieces because, oh my goodness, they are gorgeous. And she supplied the photos of, of stuff for me for the Hardanger article. Um, we've got plenty of other ones that are going to come up in the future as well. So you just have to um, go over to down the rabbit hole magazine.com. It's ended up being an infomercial, this hasn't it? Um, go over to the website and um, yeah, you'll find all the magazines there. We do have bundles from last year. <coughs> We will be putting through the, we will put bundles again um, for this year as well. So um, we usually wait until the spring issue and then we put the, the um, we put autumn, winter, spring together. And then when the summer one comes out, it'll go into, it go into the bundle as well. And so you'll be able to um, get all of them at one go. Now I have had some questions um, and this has actually just come up recently and this is another reason why I'm talking about the magazine today. We've had some questions about um, subscription. Unfortunately I can't seem to get it to work at the moment um, and I've asked them and they've talked me through it and it just doesn't seem to be working. Like So at this point in time, we only have it where it comes out. You'll have to follow us on the um, socials so you keep up to date. Um, and I announce it here as well. So you, you will always hear about it here. Which is a good thing. Um, yeah, so... And as I was saying, the YouTube channel for it, it will, um, it'll end up having different stitches on there, different styles of embroidery and all that sort of stuff. I haven't asked anybody to um, supply any videos or anything like that. Most of it will just be done by me with the camera overhead. So you can, it'll be like a little reference library type thing. We'll probably have some stitch with me's. Um, I'm thinking about doing one for Christmas over there this year as well. Uh, we're looking at... Um, putting in a, a reference library as well like so um uh, when i say reference library like um you know alphabets and stuff like that things that you use all the time um that that you can incorporate into charts or make for little cards and all that sort of stuff probably shouldn't look at the camera too much because i just looked through my magnifiers and everything went woo <laughs> So as you can see behind me, I left um, Hello Pumpkin Tree there. Oh, update on that. When I was doing my floss tube, I said I couldn't find it. I found part two. That's all I had. I haven't received anything else on um, that because I've received emails from um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch after that, but not of the um, other thing. So I'm going to have to go over and, and I haven't sent a message yet because I just I kept searching and searching and searching and trying different um, search terms and all the rest of it and I ended up finding part two and that was it. So um, now I'm going to um, email them this week and um, yeah, I'll keep you updated <laughs> on the missing parts of it's like I haven't been sent them, but I can't say Sally would never do that. Like she's, you know, I'm already in the system and yeah, like, and then I thought the first one might have been that I've only printed off one page. So I went and found the first part and it was just the welcome. It wasn't even, um, it wasn't even part one and that was the welcome, uh, one and then part two. So I don't know where part one is, but part two was there and it had part one and part two in it because as they released the, the chart ends up coming. Cause I also did the, um, the Christmas one that they had a couple of years ago, the banner one, um, and that's how that came to me because I joined up for that stitch along because I haven't joined a stitch along this year because I'm not, I'm trying not to start anything except for quilts apparently. 
But I mean, I've got the row by row. That's almost done. That's only got um. So we've only got one more row left. Of that so that's um the 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 eighth row went up this week. Um, so if you're not in the Facebook group, you wouldn't have seen it. You can't see it because it's unlisted and it's purely it's purely for my um, Facebook group. And after the 30th, once the 30th of September 2022 hits, um, then basically it will be no longer available to the people in the Facebook group. So they'll have it all for free, but then it will also be sale, so for sale. So it will go to the public um, forum then. So then you'll be able to – and each pattern um, – It'll, it'll come as a pattern and then what will happen is when you purchase that um, you will have a link in there to the playlist and then all the um, all the videos will be in that but they will remain unlisted because that is a pattern that is for sale um, but I'm sure if you're over in the group you already know that and if you're on social media you probably already have heard about it because there was a massive influx of people into the group that um, uh, once I did it, uh, made the announcement. So yeah, oh, a bit sweaty, a bit warm. I always get a bit sweaty under my glasses. So yeah, well, it looks like I'm not probably not going to get any diamonds done today, but I'm thinking that we might get this last corner done. So that's pretty good, and then I can um just focus on diamonds next week and start making some stars so what i was saying before uh we i like to work in a bit of a production line and so um that's why i'm working on all these hexagons at the moment because i had i had prepped them all so i prepped all the white ones then i prepped all the cut well i prepped all the colored ones first because i started doing it down at the the show when we got it um so i started prepping all the colored ones and then i prepped all them and then I decided that I was going to prep all the whites and then now I'm sewing all these together next I will prep like I'll prep all the colored diamonds then I'll prep all the the white diamonds and I think we worked out that we need um so it's oh it's in the pattern that's right and I think I might have actually spoke about this last week so I'll just get my reading glasses on because not my magnifiers because I won't see anything oh that's how it's a bit clear <laughs> all right so um so when I say stars okay so here's a closer picture of it I'll just get this out of the way move that out of the way okay so when I say stars see here we've got um we've got white stars and then we've got colored stars and then there's hexagons in between and there's like the little white diamonds are between the um stars as well so you can see they're there so one star is actually a, a ends up making a hexagon and a two inch hexagon like what i'm working with here so what i do is i like to get into like a production line style of things so what will happen is, I, so what I did was I made all the white ones, then I made all the coloured hexagons. The only coloured hexagons, and you can see it up here. Um, let me just find that front cover because you can see it better there. So on the front cover, see this centre one? I am thinking that I'm going to, I've done a few extra whites because, I mean, white, it's, it's neither here nor there. If I've got some of this left over, I can just do it. So that, that white one there, um, basically, I want to do in the purple cat in the centre and then have white around it. So they're the only ones that I haven't done. I've got a couple of white ones extra, but I haven't done those coloured ones because I'm still in two minds whether I want to do it in colour or whether I want to reverse it, have it in white. What do you reckon? Leave me a comment down below. Which one do you reckon I should do? Do you reckon I should put this little... Where is it? Where is my... So I want to put this purple cat, okay, in the centre of the quilt So and have white around it instead. So then that cat, just like that, becomes the focus in that centre. Or should I go the other way? So leave me a comment down below and tell me which way I should go. I want to go this way. But if the majority says no, do it as the quilt is, then I'll go with that, and I'll just make, and then I'll just make myself a coaster with the little a white little what do you call them little trivet type thing where you, yeah because it'll be big enough because 
you can see there that's so then have more out that's like a little on my bedside table or something like that so yeah so that that's the only one I haven't cut so back to the stars so you've got the colored stars um, so we need 66 printed stars so that's the colored ones and then for the white stars we need 76 so there are oh, excuse me So for the 66, we need 396 coloured pieces to it and 396 of these dime, white diamonds. So we need 396 in the colour and 396 in the And that's just to make the solid stars. Then for the one that's reversed, the white stars, we need 456 of these and then we also need 456 of the colour because if you have a look, when I get back to that page, so you can see the coloured stars had the white diamonds around it, but the white stars had the colour around it. So that's why we need so many. So it comes to, I think, it, um, off the top of my head, I think it's about 1,704 pieces that we need. You do the math and tell me if I'm right. <laughs> That's that's just from my memory from a Friday night after a couple of drinks <laughs> doing math. <laughs> don't know how well that went, but I'm pretty sure it's 1704 that we need. I mean, I could get my calculator and do it now, but we need a lot on that. So that's why I'm thinking of doing a sort of mass production for my diamonds um, and just actually sticking each of the diamonds like... I know that there's products out there that you can get that are like applique stuff, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my glue pen and then what I'll do is get the papers and just put a, a dot in the center of the paper and stick it down on the fabric. So let's say this is the fabric and then stick them all down on the fabric and leave a good amount of area around them because we need it to be a quarter inch bigger all the way around. So I can eyeball that. It can be a little bit bigger. It can be a touch smaller. It doesn't matter because if you look at one of my pieces, if I use the template, which I think it's this one here. Yeah. If I use the template and cut the fabric, you can see here that we only have a really small border and I don't like that I prefer mine to be this way like big like this so I'm I'm not adverse to um just plopping it down and, and working with it the other thing I was thinking if that doesn't work for me if they just keep falling off um if that doesn't work for me what I'll do is I will cut rectangles um that are let me get me a template here that will need to be um, two and a half inches in length so from this point to this point and top to bottom there will be need to, a, a square fabric two and a half inches by from side point to side point let's say two inches it's a little bit under it's it's uh, maybe yeah it'll be one and a half but I'd go yeah one and a half I'd probably go a little bit bigger so you can see there I was just measuring it um, on the, the cutting board. So yeah, I'll probably go one and a half maybe. <coughs> and then that way I can just wrap them around. So in that case, I probably won't use the glue. I'll probably stitch it on like this because it's just as quick <coughs> because you're just doing knots. Excuse me. My voice is a bit funny today. I've got a bit of a, it's been um, windy and dusty and so it doesn't take any longer than the, the gluing method. And I'm not, because I don't go through it, I don't have to worry about pulling that out. It just stays like that. So um, in the next week, I will know where I'm at um, with that. So I will just hopefully, hopefully um, have some joy and get where I need to be. But I'm thinking like if I just stick them on and then cut around, I can just like... Yeah, it's not going to take long because then the, the little diamond is stuck to the fabric and I'm good to go really then. Um, but I don't know either. Like at the same time, I'm not 100% sure either. So, yeah, you know, it's all – I'm trying to just get the production line thing happening and then that way um, I know that it's um, – they're all prepped and ready to go and I can just start sewing them together and, you know, come on and have a bit of a chit-chat with you. But there are other things that I want to do. I've got 
and I'm just going to go grab them and I'll show you the, some of the stuff that I've got here. So one of the, some of the things that um, I'm just going to switch the cameras around because it'll be easier to see. So one of them is called Among the Stars again, and this is like block seven, but it'll give you an idea. It's all in it's all in this Christmas sort of fabric, and it's all stars. So that's why it's called Among the Stars again. Okay, so there's that one that I want to do, and then I also have the 2021 um, dis, uh, designer mystery. So that's all in these beautiful colours here. So you've got some greens and oranges and you've got some like peaches and same again with the cream and, and this one and then this one and there's uh, pretty gorgeous blocks as well now I haven't started any of this this one and I've also got the 2022 one which the backing one and I'll show that when it comes in so you can see there there's some beautiful blocks. I love that one um, beautiful blocks here that I want to do and this is not all of them this is only some of them so they sit there and this one sits up there I'll have to put them all back in after this knocking everything over so there's that one but I also have the 2018 um, designer one and I've started this so you can see here that I've already started this one but I've misplaced block for block four so I've got to find that because otherwise I'm going to be missing it I do know someone that's got it and I know that I've purchased it because I've got everything up into 12 um so it's here somewhere it's it's either fallen it, it might be still in that cover because that's where they originally were or it's fallen behind here so that is block one and um I'll show you one that I haven't cut and these are the colors that are in it so all the center blocks have um the writing in it and so that's and if you've not got a block of the month or the designer mystery from the fat quarter shop like i have already made this block i'm pretty sure or it's no, it's cut and ready to go but i've made this number one okay and i'll just show you and i'll leave it uh, i don't think you can get this one but i'll um leave a link to down to their block of the months and stuff like that now i've cut this okay so i'll show you what the block looks like i've sewn it together so that's the block's a bit crushed so i've got that and then i'll just show you on the other camera and this is all the fabric that i've got left over so that was the, they and they come everyone comes with fabric like this okay so essentially i have enough here and you can see i've already started making a second one okay i've got enough here to make a second one and like there's heaps of this like you only need a four and a half inch square and there's all that finished so what i was thinking at the end of this what i was going to do i'll make probably make my favorite blocks i'll make a couple of those and have some throw cushions for the bed and then the leftover stuff i might make a nice little um what do you call them bed runner have you ever made a bed runner before so the bed runner goes over the foot of your bed just keep your feet well it's a little bit of decor you can have it in the middle of your bed but it's a bed runner and i thought well i can maybe do an english paper piecing one with hexagons and um in some and i've got a, a quilt that's like a, a one piece quilt it's not one that i've made it was one that i had purchased and it's just plain white well this would look beautiful over that and then i, have, I can use the throw cushions with that as well so i thought hmm I might do something like that but you can see here like as I said I've already made this one so there's the block there and then I've got I think I've made three or four yep there's gonna be four corners still and then I've I've already cut the pieces that I need for most of it there's the little cream ones and there's the little strips what else do we need and then the center one which is the words and I've just got to cut some more little squares of that got the hiccups sorry um yeah so I've got enough in there to make another and I really like that block so that's why I've made started making it so these are some of the things that I'm going to do on crafting with DDs because it's stuff I'm, I'm taking the time to do my stuff um because i do the tutorials for everybody and i do quilts for everybody else but i keep pushing my stuff aside and i don't want to do that anymore i just want to start doing my stuff because what's going to happen is i'm going to get to a point in my life where i can't do the stuff and then i'm just going to have to give all the stuff to savannah now savannah would much rather me make the quilts and have them here so she can have a pick and choose the quilts that she wants <laughs> 
she's funny. She comes out here and I, because I said to her about moving over to Nanango that I'm going to get rid of some stuff and, and all this sort of hoo-ha. You know what she says to me? She walks out and she goes, that's my quilt, that's my quilt, that's my quilt. I'm like, honey, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just moving and all my quilts are coming with me. <laughs> So I'm going, oh look, she's picked out which quilt she wants and I know which ones Nera Lee likes. So, um, yeah, I know what I haven't labeled any of my quilts. So what I'm thinking of doing, and I've got Mia's quilts here. So you can see one of Mia's quilts behind me and I've got the 3D pin mill one as well. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, I'm thinking that, uh, I might just, uh, make some labels and just put their names on it and just put two Savannah. Um, put a little story in that first quilt I ever designed and made to Savannah. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, this, and this quilt's there for Dharma Jane as well. I've sent, um, she's, she's got her quilt here, still here. She asked for that to stay here. So that's still here, um, being looked after. And yeah, that one she made, quilted and bound herself on that so that was her first quilt and that's why it's still here um and then i've got a couple of little lap quilts of mia's and stuff they're all still here um mainly because she didn't want to take them she wanted them to stay here she wanted to, i i guess it was like a little way of her leaving a little piece of her here um even though she was moving out so yeah so that's here i actually used one of her quilts as um my um long arm machine cover so when i'm not using it just drapes over it not getting touched or anything like that because no one's allowed to touch my um long arm machine and so yeah so that's just there um draping over so it's not going to get wrecked or anything like that and she likes it like occasionally um you know like i've when i've spoken to her on the phone we haven't spoken in some some time because her mum's being a bit funny at the moment about that sort of stuff but um well, we have spoken on the phone we walk around we do it like video chat like facetiming and so <laughs> She sees stuff around the house and she goes, oh, that's fine, that's fine. Um, and I'm in the process, which you'll get to see tomorrow on my floss tube. That's when I show you different things that I'm doing. Um, I'm doing some crochet. I'm, I've got this book and I'll go into more detail. If you've been over on my Instagram, I put a picture up about um, the other day and I put up that, you know, I've wanted to do this project for a while. Well, I'll talk a little bit more about it in my floss tube. And... Um, yeah, you'll get to see what I'm working on. I'm planning on uh, making all these little squares. And they're about four inches, four and a half inches. Um, I think they're four inches, actually. So, And they're just little sample stitches of all the different crochet stitches. And I've got 500 to choose from. But I'm just starting at the beginning of my book. And I'm working my way through. And once I've done all these squares, I will put a blanket together for all the kids. Because I, when I was um, pregnant with... Savannah um I just had to think then when I made the blankets yeah when I was pregnant with Savannah, when I was pregnant with Dharma Jane I didn't really do any crafting I didn't feel up to it I was really tired I just I pretty much sat around for the nine months that I was pregnant because I wasn't well with, like I just didn't feel right with her um but when Savannah uh, I fell pregnant with Savannah um, I was living on the Gold Coast at the time and I was doing classes at Spotlight. They had a, a classroom off the side at Ashmore there and I was doing sewing classes, learning how to make um, clothes and stuff like that. I've subsequently forgot it all. <laughs> um, I just, I was more into crafting than the making clothes. But anyway, I went and done, I made a set, I made myself a set of maternity um pajamas out of satin I made those and I made um some clothing and stuff for Dharma Jane and um yeah but I knitted while I was pregnant I actually knitted the girls blank so I knitted Dharma Jane a blanket and I knitted Savannah a blanket and I went to spotlight and I got all the fancy thread and at that time all that feather um yarn was really popular so there was ones that were like really whispery looked like little uh, whispers of hair and um, then there were the other ones that were looked like a, um, they were frayed feathers and so um, I had that and uh, I went in and I to and like if you've if you've ever knitted with that or crocheted with that so you can't really crochet you can but it's not the easiest thing to do but if you've ever knitted with that stuff you know that just using that it's quite a lightweight um, yarn and it's it's not great um, it's got no substantial warmth to it. And 
I realized that we're very early on that we were going to be moving away from the Gold Coast and heading out west and I know that it was colder out west and it gets cold down on the coast as well so what I done is I basically just done plain knitting I didn't do pearl or anything like that just a plain knit and what I did was I got a eight ply acrylic the feather and then the whisper um, yarn and three strands knitted them a blanket and so basically what I done I did 30 stitches across and 30 rows down and that and then ended ended that off and then um, put it in a pile and I just kept doing that I bought enough wool to make enough for a big blanket to fit on a double bed so they had it so, so if it was extra cold they could double it over and that's what I done I just um, sat there and um, when I was watching TV or whatever I sat there and knitted these blankets so I made one for Dharma Jane and Dharma Jane's favorite color at the time was pink and I didn't know what Savannah's was going to be hers turned out to be red but I did her a purple blanket and they had them for ages unfortunately Dharma Jane got really violently ill uh, with a stomach virus one night and the nature of that uh, do you think I could get that she threw up everywhere I know this is disgusting but she like projectile vomited everywhere in her room all over this blanket it was in winter and I washed that thing so many times and I could still smell it and in the end she's like I don't want it mum and so we ended up getting rid of it and I never did that was when she was I think she was about 10 or 11 and I never did replace it for her on that um because they haven't had that I'm thinking that I might make her a little lap one or something and send that to her um well just make it and when she starts being nice to me again because she's not being very nice at the moment um I can um I'll send it to her or something or just maybe just send it to her as a surprise I don't know maybe that might make her feel a bit better about things or whatever is going on there but anyway um I don't really want to get into it because it just upsets me I'm sorry that's why I'm being a bit vague and I'm trying to not be upset all the time um about it because I can't change it I cannot change how she feels um so I'm not trying I'm trying so hard not to get upset about it when really all I want to do is sit in the corner and cry so but that's not productive for anybody so I'm thinking like I, I decided that I'm going to do this crochet one and um, I'm just using acrylic wool that I got I was going to do a really long one and stripey for me up but I decided that that was just I wasn't going back to it it was very boring and I because I already know how to double crochet and I thought, you know, but this book, it's got all these, um, and I'll go into it more tomorrow on my floss tube. So you'll have to tune in for that tomorrow. Um, and I was just, I just really, really like the idea of doing all these different, um, crochet style, uh, stitches and stuff. So it starts from single crochet. And so the first three blocks in the book are all based around, um, single crochet and so they are different designs though like so you basically doing um and then the next one will be based on uh maybe double crochet or something i don't know i haven't looked that far ahead but do you know what i mean like so i'll be able to just um focus on doing those and it took me because i haven't crocheted in so long and i haven't done cr single crochet in ages I don't know what I was thinking but anyway I was um trying to do it and I just kept making mistake after mistake it took me like four or five tries to get it until I got it right and even then it still looks a bit dodgy but I'm sure as I go and but the thing is that yarn that I'm using and you'll see that tomorrow um it, it was already crocheted up into a long strip to make a, a big strip for a strip quilt so I was going to just do each color of the yarn in one strip but um, yeah, I ended up unraveling it. And so it's a little bit, it's not as great as if it was a brand new ball of wool. Um, but I'm going to continue on with this and I'm going to call it a day because I, I've been on for over an hour um, and I've still got a few things to do. I might finish this one off tonight. And then next week when I pop in, we'll just work with the diamonds next week. So if you are thinking about doing any this uh, pattern, I'll leave all the links down below for you. You'll see them down there. So you can um, go and do some shopping. Now the pattern, I'm pretty sure it is a PDF as well as a physical copy. So if you're here in Australia, you can get a physical copy. Um, if not, you can get the pdf and the papers and everything like that i'll leave links down below where you can get all that um 
and then that way you can do a little bit of shopping as i said the donuts that we talked about uh the, so these here i will leave a link down there for australian link and that's to basically send me an email say hey i want this um can you order me one in it'll take a it usually takes about two weeks for them to get by the time i've ordered it and it's gone through and then it gets to me it's around two weeks so give it three weeks and it'll be to you um i do have the larger spools for those here in australia i do have the larger spools here i've got um, I'm out of cream, but I do have some other colors there that you'd be able to like a pale pink or something like that. It wouldn't matter which one you use because they are fine. Um, I got them there so that and they are all free um, postage for those. And for everybody else, I will leave you some Amazon links or uh, links to the Fat Quarter Shop um, down below and you can go and have a bit of a shop. And uh, yeah, but if you use the links, that helps support the channel, which means that I can bring you more crafty tutorials and more crafts to do um, and spend time with you. But that is it for me today. If you have made it this far, don't forget to leave me, what can you leave me down below? Leave me the little spool of thread. So the little thread spool um, in the emoji. So I know you've made it this far. And if you have made it this far and you're a new viewer or a returning viewer and you've yet to subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. And as always, leave me a comment down below with the spool and give me a thumbs up. But as I said, that's it for me today. Have a lovely day. Hope you get lots of crafting in and I will see you all again tomorrow. Bye for now.